This is the Relevant Podcast. It's episode 1133, 1133. You know there's some numerologist girl out there freaking out right now. 1133. Uh, And it's a relevant podcast here in Orlando. I'm your host, Cameron Strang. And joining me from Loverland, Virginia, it's Jesse Carey. Hello, hello. From Nashville, it's our managing editor, downtown Emily Brown. Hey, y'all. More on Jesse's condition in a moment. And uh, from LA, you know from Social Club Misfits, it's Marty. What's up? Derek might join us. He texted confirmation yeah. that he was going to, but we just, we, the, the podcast waits for no one. We Let got him to go. When I asked if yesterday if he was going to make it on time, he said, LOL bet. So that really Which is kind of open like, to interpretation. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that know. seems like confirmation, but I'm. He's, he also could have been laughing at the idea that you think he's going to show up at, a, yeah. at an unusual time. Yeah. And yeah. I chose the optimistic route. Yeah, uh, so. Well, Jesse, why do you sound like death? Well, I I thought we were over all of this, but evidently I've contracted a virus known as COVID nineteen oh once again. Gosh. And as is of this your morning, second round? This is yeah. I had it. I don't know the first time it was making the rounds in, uh, <laughs> when was it was that, popular. Twenty twenty back when it was popular. Yeah, yeah. I, I I had it. Yeah, at peak. I think I had it at peak popularity. You know, <laughs> um, now that it's sort of faded from the zeitgeist, it's it's come back for me. So I'm. Uh, yeah, it's been a, a morning of just lying still in bed so this waiting is, for this to arrive. You, you, yeah. you sound terrible. <laughs> I've kind of been feeling run down lately. Cameron, I think I was talking to you like on Tuesday night or something. I'm like, yeah, I thought I was having a cold or something. Yeah. And I actually tested negative earlier this week. But last night it was like, oh boy, my throat feels like it's on fire. And it feels like someone punched every inch of my body. So I should probably test again. And here we are. So, so we're going to get a delirious Jesse on this episode. Or yeah, I, or he's just going to go away halfway through because he just nice. had to lay down. No, don't say yeah. that. I, my God. Not go away <laughs> like permanently. I'm talking about. I, I, I've i taken so many vitamins right now that my concern is vitamin toxicity. I'll be Have you taken horse, oh, wow. horse vitamins? I think horse vitamins. I've taken everything. I've taken any and everything. Anything because that my, looks like a vitamin. My, my feeling is at this point in the pandemic – Everybody can be right and everybody can be wrong. There's only one way to know, and that's to ingest everything in your medicine cabinet all at one time <laughs> and hope for the best. I think that's what most scientists say, yeah. just yeah. yeah, you put everything in you, and then the right thing is in the mix somewhere. And, and the other stuff will cancel one. out it's the other thing. It's a flawless thing. strategy, yeah. yeah. That's exactly. what I learned in science. So yeah. this, is your fl- this is your flu game. You're literally, it's your flu game. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, Emily, that's a reference to Michael Jordan in the NBA Finals. He had the flu. I'll be he honest. I was anyway. like, I don't know what that means. Yeah, he played during the flu. He had, he played Game Five well, with the flu. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, here here's the thing. If uh, you know Emily, if I, I God forbid anyone else you know has to quarantine, but you could watch the Last Dance and you could learn all about that reference. Because here's what I've I'm only I'm only a morning into this. I was planning on going to work this morning, going into the office, you know. Um, so, but I have been sitting around. And I have, I don't know what to watch. Like we, I have every streaming platform, and I spent most of my morning scrolling, planning because I know what the weekend ahead is. Right? I know it's just watching TV and Google yeah. and, and sitting around, and I'm paralyzed with decision. I feel like this is what COVID has become: is <laughs> what am I going to stream? Like what show am I investing in? Yeah. That because this is the chance. I'm not going to get it again. If I'm going to binge something over the course of a weekend, this is my opportunity. But I feel like the stakes are pretty high because if you get like three or four episodes in, you're invested, yeah. you know. But what if you don't mm-hmm. like it? I, I don't know, guys. I, th- I that's <laughs> you could the do main a movie thing marathon. I've been trying. Like no, a movie marathon might be a little safer. Th- this is what I've been stressing about all morning. Go ahead, Marty. <laughs> this is first off, it's a great thing to stress out about. But let yeah. me tell you, as somebody who you know, new father, the last week and a half. I've had the 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. shift. And okay. I'm I'm at the point. So, you know, obviously I'm, I'm up. I don't I could sleep for five hours. I'm good for the whole day. Um, yeah. I'm at the point in my Netflix and my Hulu. I have everything, too. I'm at the point that you, you know how you like save movies you'd like, but you'll never watch them. 
I'm starting yeah. to watch those movies. So this morning, guess what I saw? Twins featuring Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> followed up, followed up by Never Back Down Two, another movie. Remember Back Never Back Down the One? Classic. Yeah, but this one's directed by Michael J. White, which has no connection to. I try to start this new movie with Kevin Hart on Netflix, and. I didn't like it. I just stopped. But I will say I'm, I, I'm at the point in my life where I'm hitting all the movies that I never – The Hunt for Red October. like you know, And then I'm following yeah. up with Twins and then following up with – It's just like a, a 90s and 80s movies marathon. You just have let, to just go for – jump in it deep, bro. Just jump in let, it. Let, let me throw something at you here, Marty, because I like what you're on to. Because like – yeah, I mean the last time I've like truly binge watched something was on a long flight where I watched like four episodes or something. But what? I like the idea – of I'm not a big watcher. Nightly, I watch six to ten episodes rarely, of a show. I rarely watch television. I watch if I'm watching anything, it's basketball, like it's sports are on in the background. But I'm Same. rarely, I'm rarely. I, I'm a TV person. Television. The second I get off work, I walk in the other room. TV goes on and it goes off oh when camera. I go to bed at yeah. two or three my, in the morning. My, my TV probably doesn't go on until about ten, and it's while I fall asleep watching, you know, the TNT half. What do you do all evening? I, uh, you know, you guys I are mean, always out doing stuff, though. You guys are well, very, yeah, very. It, but we, we always we Dana makes Dana. Well, if you, I don't know if this is interesting to anyone. Dana likes to make a big dinner. We all eat dinner as a family. Yeah, we're a board game family. Play a lot of board games. Really? Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we love. Uh, What's the game? Um, right now it's uh, man. I got the COVID. You're doing brain, like but new games the, then? No, no, a oh. lot of classics. Oh, sequence, yeah. sequence is very popular oh, in our sequence. house. I've never seen that one. There's one where, dude, I can't believe I forget the name, but you like line up colors and numbers, and you have to make these. It's uh, like different. It's similar to like dominoes, right? And you have to accumulate score. Oh, uh, it's like match a match? No, not match. No, I could go grab it from the game cabinet. But anyway, but we do a lot of that stuff. All that to say, um, it's not very. So exciting you spend evenings. time with people, and and. Uh, for me to to distract from my crippling loneliness, I yeah. spend time with people on TV. So yeah. there you go. You know, Put it in the we're background. doing the same thing. We're doing Put it the same in the background. Thing. Just but to feel I, safe. But, yeah. but here's what, and I'm not saying that myself. Right? I, I, it, I don't think there's anything all that virtuous about spending your time playing board games versus watching. That's not true, television. man. You are investing in your kids. You're forming a, bo- a lifelong bond. They'll never forget this. this yeah, I well, mean, they get very competitive and often in an argument. So I don't know if we're doing more harm than good. Here. It's, it's a it's a brutal bunch of. Do you, of do you like play for real? Like, do you play them like you're an adult to a, another adult? Or are you playing yes. nice because they're babies? No, that They're stopped younger. a while ago. Okay, that stopped a you're while like, ago. You're like drop no. four, four times type dad now. Like you're hitting oh, your kids. It is merciless. <clears throat> okay. Well, yeah. games of my. It's funny you say that. Game, my mother in law was here this weekend, and my kids and her were playing Uno on Saturday morning on the couch, and she came up. She was like, "I'm sorry, guys." I think they're, I, I don't think these are the real rules. They are <laughs> savages. Like, you know, they made her keep drawing and drawing it. Like she had half the Uno cards and my kids are just looking at each other. Like there's no way grandma's beating one of us. Like, I don't, I think we're doing more harm. Did, than did you see the, I love watching the Uno Twitter account. Cause yeah. like Uno posted, uh, no, you can't play a draw two on top of a draw two. Yeah. And somebody replied, thanks for the cards. We'll take it from here. <laughs> you know, like we don't want yeah. your rules. <laughs> yeah. We don't want your rules. <laughs> yeah. There are rules which are crazy for Uno. Like no one really knows that there are rules for Uno. There's house rules. There's house yeah. rules. Every house yeah. has its own rules. Yeah. But yeah. but Marty, back to your point about watching what what am I going to spend my time watching? Because uh I like that you watch Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger because Freedom one of my favorite <laughs> thing one of my favorite things about a certain era of pop culture was when comedies had a, 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 an irrational and unnecessary sci-fi twist. Yes. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was in two of these films. One where Hold he on. was identical twins with and Danny DeVito. Mom? Mr. Mom? Mr. Mom. That's next, where tomorrow, Arnold next Schwarzen- tomorrow. Where <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger is, for some reason, he still has the physique of a bodybuilder, which is never explained. He still has his, um, <laughs> you know. with the baby. Like he is abs- it, a, it's a Scandinavian, a Scandinavian accent, right? Yeah. Like, and, and, and Which but they he's do also explain. They do explain. He's from a far off island. That's how they explain it in Twins. Well, in but he's in Scandinavian. He's, Norway, he's like I'm off yeah. the coast of Fiji. That's his explanation. But but then, it, 
but then in in Mr. Mom, in, in addition to having the the physique of an Adonis that is never explained, um, he for some reason is the world's leading fertility doctor mm-hmm. and decides to impregnate himself, and that is the plot of the film. I just love movies where like the pitch was this is height. Uh, th- Arnold Schwarzenegger is the biggest action star yeah. in the world. And yeah. somebody walked into a movie executive's office and said, hey, elevator pitch. Just picture this, okay? Arnold Schwarzenegger, action star. Um, uh, um, Pregnant. Thick, Aus- thick Austrian accent. Yeah. It's never quite explained. He's pregnant. Yeah. He had three back-to-back. That's to it. Back. And he well, just he walked three off. of those. He had and three they're of those like, back-to-back. It- he Here's thirty twins. million dollars. Go make he it. Had, yeah, yeah. He had twins. He got ten million dollars. Mister Mom, ten million dollars. Then he got Kindergarten Cop, ten million dollars. Yep. And and that was like back to back to back. And then you know what he did? Saved his career by doing. I was watching the Arnold documentary. It's a good documentary to see on Netflix. Yeah, the I've, one. I've I've I have seen it actually. Good one. Then he gets uh, Terminator yeah. Two, and guess what? Everything changed again for him. Or Terminator, you know, but it's kind of like man. again. Again, the Rock kind of did that too with the Tooth Fairy. He did like a like yeah, a handful you have to of do like, You got to do like you have to reach all. Like Vin, Vin Diesel did it. Remember he did the pacifier. Oh, they all have to reach kids yeah. too. Yeah, Interesting. but the thing is, that I, I've said this before. Ter- this is my main thing about Terminator. Okay, <laughs> he's he's a robot from the future, an assassin mm-hmm. robot from the future, mm-hmm. right? He made in the likeness of a human, yeah. and he has mm-hmm. to. And in the different movies, he goes back to the past to assassinate different targets. Mm-hmm. Why in the future did they make this robot have an Austrian accent? Either he's <laughs> Austrian or he's English. There's all no right. reason for the programmers to say, all right, we're going to make the ultimate killing soldier. Well, okay. What is he going to look like? He's going to look like a big yeah. tough guy. Makes perfect sense. He's yeah. going to have a metal skeleton. He's going to be able to handle firearms. He's going to have an eye <clears throat> that he can look at. And it's gonna die, and it's gonna tell him all the information. Oh yeah, he's gonna have an Austrian accent. They're you like, no, take he's further. speaking Austrian. No, 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 he's speaking <laughs> English, but he speaks with an Austrian accent. Yeah. And we're gonna program him like that. That's genius. Just, I never thought about that. Jesse, I go go back to uh, the classics. Like I, every once in a while, I'll just sit down and rewatch The Wire, or I'll rewatch The Sopranos, or you know, like like epic. You know, it's great, but you haven't seen it in forever, so it's kind of new again. I think that you should, that's the call. I like to pick an actor, actress, and just go through their movies uh, too. So, like, you too. could do like an Arnold Schwarzenegger marathon, and you know, your brain might rot by the end of it. Them all. <laughs> your brain we we did this with Nicholas Cage. I did, I did that <laughs> no, when I was like thirteen. Got a good one. So is Robert De Niro. Great, a great Robert De Niro. Just watch all his movies back to back. Oh, it, Jesse, do, do rewatch uh, "It's Always Sunny." You like lo- you like that show. I'm always that. Well, I that that is a background show for me. Like if I'm eating lunch, if I'm some home, if I'm home during the day, or if I just want something, I do. I I will fire up always something. I love always. It's yeah. a classic. It curb. I, I I'll rewatch Curb all ten seasons. Yeah. HBO is the best. I'm watching Thirty Maybe. Rock for the first time. Great okay, show. Funny. Yeah. Great. I, I was Great trying show. to get her onto it. I was like, "You'll like Thirty Rock if you like this and this. You'll like." 30 it's Rock. one that so. I've been like. It's it's like you were saying, Marty. Like it's on my list. I'll get to it eventually. Yeah, and then it's one of those. You'll never. I will. got to it eventually. Yeah. We have a great show in store for you today. I know I own. Uh, coming up, we talked to Dr. Darius Daniels. He's a pastor. Uh, he's a leader. He's one of the wisest men I've ever met. Uh, you don't want to miss that conversation. Also, at the end of the show, we have a very Emily game uh, that we actually... Etta Marcus, the song is Girls That Play. Well, today's show is brought to you in part by Factor. Uh, Factor's ready-to-eat meal deliveries take the stress out of meal planning and set you up for success in the new year. You get to skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue, and instead get chef-crafted, dietitian-approved meals delivered right to your door. They have over 35 meals to choose from every week, 
And if you have dietary restrictions like keto or calories or vegan or vegetarian, they have all that. Plus, they have other add-ons and smoothies and stuff. I have been a Factor customer for a while now. Every Monday, my new box shows up, and I'm telling you, it's the, it's what I eat. Their chef-prepared meals are ready literally in two minutes. Well, right now, Factor has a special deal for Relevant Podcast listeners. You can head over to factormeals.com slash relevant50 and use code RELEVANT50 to get 50% off. That's code RELEVANT50 at factormeals.com slash RELEVANT50 to get 50% off. Go do it. Well, Relevant has a lot happening this year, and we don't want you to miss a thing. Make sure to sign up for our newsletter right there on the front page at relevantmagazine.com, and we'll send you our top five trending stories sent to your inbox every weekday. We'll also send you a weekly uh, podcast newsletter with the latest episodes, some uh, fan extras, and first peeks at the new shows that we're going to be rolling out throughout this year. Make sure to sign up. It's the best way to keep in touch with everything we got going on. Hey, a little update. Derek's here. Please welcome to the show. Hello. Hi. Yeah, <laughs> we were we were uh, wondering if you were coming because your only reply was LOL bet. <laughs> so we weren't sure. We could have gone either way. <laughs> gone we weren't sure way. if you were joking like, yeah, right, I'm coming I early. Heard it. She's like, what yeah, does this mean? That, and I was like, I think that means yes. I'm going to move forward as if that, as if that means a- yes. AI was pretty confident that you were going to be on, but the LOL threw it. It was, yeah. it was just that. You know, go either maybe way. it's on. Maybe it's jokes on us. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. It's time for Slices. Uh, what do you have, Jesse? Oh, and by the way, Derek, uh, Jesse has COVID, so he yeah, sounds terrible. terrible. As of this morning. Yeah. Awesome. Fun, fun. Yeah, it's Yay. been a great day. It's been a great day. This uh, is the song that doesn't end. Huh? You, you said this is your flu game, which made me think about Michael Jordan's actual flu game. Yeah. Sports again. Do you think he played to give the flu to all the other players? Well, if you watch The, the Last players? Dance, if you, if you watch The Last Dance, he actually gives the real story which he says it wasn't the flu, oh. you know, because there, there was long rumors that he was hung over from like partying, but he set the record straight in the last dance, which mm-hmm. it, he said that he, he ordered, he was hanging out with the, with some of his buddies in the room in the hotel the night before the game. And they were on the road. I think they were in Indiana at the time. And they ordered a pizza from a pizza place near to the stadium. And the pizza deli- – like the theory that Michael Jordan has is the pizza place knew that it was the Bulls staying at this hotel and it was oh. players from the Bulls that ordered the pizza and they had poisoned the pizza and that Michael Jordan consumed a poisoned pizza the night before the game. Mm-hmm. That's what he says in The Last Dance. Did, but, but who else ate the pizza? Were they sick? That, I, you hit I the exactly what I was going to say. I think he I, – I, I, I don't want to speak – Derek, you watched The Last Dance, right? Uh, I, no, I did too. I, I just don't remember this. I saw the, yeah, I saw the, uh, I, I saw the, uh, the clips though. I, I don't, re- I don't recall the details. Um, but he seems to like, to him, this is a matter of fact and history. This isn't, he says it wasn't the flu. It was a poison mm-hmm. pizza, which I think is actually <laughs> a way better story, but it doesn't work for me to come on the podcast and go, this is my poison pizza pod. No one yeah. knows what that means. <laughs> Anyway, all right, what do you have for slices? All right, well, I've made my feelings about federal government overreach on this pod <laughs> what, known at nauseum over the years. And mm-hmm. I, I think they should, you know, for the most part, just let our live our, our free lives as American citizens. Mm-hmm. But the federal government recently uh, uh, released new policy that is going to affect, you know, every place in the country, and I fully support it. I, I don't know who at the um, U.S. Department of Transportation or the U.S. Federal Highway Administration specifically enacted this legislation, um, but I want to applaud them. This legislation makes it illegal. It makes it a federal crime to put little funny sayings on those electronic roadway hazard signs. <laughs> We've all seen them. We've all been driving down the highway, and someone in the highway <clears throat> department is getting cute with the message. They Here's are. a couple of examples. Here's a couple of examples. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, this is, this was in Massachusetts. Use your blinker. 
It's spelled like <laughs> Blinka. <laughs> this one, this one was from Ohio. Visiting in-laws, slow down, get there late. <laughs> this one, <laughs> this one is from Pennsylvania. Oh boy, cringe even saying it. Don't drive Star Spangle Hammered. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. This was in uh, 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 Arizona. Hands on the wheel, not your meal. Okay. These like are now it. a crime. These jokes like are now a federal crime to make, which I support. Uh, I have a lot of thoughts. Mainly, like, one, who's driving down the – recklessly driving down the highway in New Jersey and sees a sign that says, uh, uh, you know – don't drive sparse star spangled hammered. And they're like, you're right. I had too much to drink. I'm going to pull over because of that funny <laughs> sign. I'm going to rethink my decision to get behind the wheel today or, or like, yeah, I should be late to see my in-laws. They're not effective, but it's just bad comedy. This is the thing. <laughs> it is distracting to drivers. Not for the, it, no one's getting in an accident because they're guffawing at these. This is what, this is what they claim that these are hazards to drivers that they're distracting. The implication is people are driving they're like, oh, I'm laughing so hard at this pun that I'm going to throw my car into oncoming traffic. No, that is not happening. These are just bad comedy and they, they present no hazard. It's just we're better as a country than this. And I think, I think, and I will, I will hang it up after this. I think if you're listening Whoever is, and the government is in charge, mm -hmm. come for church marquees next. They've been, <laughs> please shut it down. Shut it down. Okay. Free speech has limits. I, I, see, I'm down. shocked. I know you're being tongue in cheek, but you're Mr. Libertarian. You know, the government doesn't need to meddle with my comedy. And you're sitting there saying they need to be the comedy police now. I, I'm shocked. That's big government. Because this is anti-comedy. This is anti-comedy. I don't okay. need. Is I don't need the government doing comedy. The government <laughs> stays out of comedy entirely. Keep them off the signs, government employee. You work at the. You work at the highway. Great. Keep the traffic flowing. The don't give me. Let a comedian do jokes. Okay. It's not how this works. Would you feel differently if the jokes were actually funny? It, it, that's it's it's irrelevant because it because, because they aren't they're funny. Not funny. <laughs> hey, it, it would be like it would be like this. It, th this is the equivalent. It's like someone at the at the you know the post office. Okay, another federal employee. It's like I could I could give you the mail or I could sing it to you, and I think <laughs> singing's great. And it's like no, just give me the mail. Like I know what you're trying to do, yeah. lighten up the line Road here. Work. But it's not the job. Yeah. How do you feel about rhyming though? Like not not like like in Florida, the most clever they'll do is click it or ticket. Yeah, it's not like a joke. I'm with it. Campaign. No. Yeah. No. No. No, I, I no click it or ticket. No. It just says the law. It should state. <laughs> it should state in this state in and it should be long because that's how law is written. And you should be driving down the highway and there should be a series of signs that says. In the law of the state of Florida, and then like another quarter mile, <laughs> you can be issued a traffic citation, and it's another quarter mile. If you voluntarily unclick your seatbelt, another thing, <laughs> while you're driving down the highway, that, that's how it should be done. This is this a, we're a country of laws. Just, just we're a country of laws. This isn't a Mad Lib. You only have 80 characters to really make something work. It's really difficult as well, and you know. What about some poor kid out there who their dream is to get a joke on these signs? That's what they, that's the only thing they've ever wanted. Get a better dream, kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're shooting, raise the bar. Okay. Yeah. Dream bigger. <laughs> All right. All right. What do you have, Marty? All right, I know it's uh, an election year and I try to stay out of politics. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a great story. Um, passenger trapped in an airplane bathroom for an entire flight. <laughs> so. There's so many things about the story that makes me laugh. Number one, uh, let me just tell the story. Uh, passenger jumps on the airline called Spice Jet. That's the name of the airline. Red flag right there. Nope. Yeah, red, red flag. flag. <laughs> Spice Jet. He gets on this flight. He's going from it's Mumbai to Spice another country. Jet, bro. Yeah, Spice Jet. What? That's the first. Like that's the first. Is it owned know, like, by the Spice wait. Girls? It's owned by. It's owned by Old Spice. Just kidding. No. <laughs> no. No. You said Mumbai. That's India. So it's spicy. Yeah. Like yeah. spice, uh, oh but you don't, God. you know, I don't, okay. I don't do it. You know, in Puerto Rico air doesn't, it's not, you know, gondolas air or platano air, you know? <laughs> so anyway, so this guy, is in the, he goes to the bathroom and he gets locked in his flight for an hour and 45 minutes. Um, couldn't get out. The lock broke, stuck in the bathroom. The, the flight 
attendant really tried to help him out, <laughs> all they could do was slip him a little note. He took a picture of the note. Luckily, I think he has his phone. I mean, that's why you have to go to the bathroom with your phone. But he took a picture of the note and said, sorry, we cannot do anything. We have to wait for you to uh, – the plane to land. We're going to be landing in a couple minutes. By the way, it landed about 30 minutes after that uh, piece of paper was slid oh. under the door. But just imagine. I just want you all to imagine <laughs> – you're in you're in India. Oh. You're leaving from Mumbai. You're stuck in a bathroom for an hour forty five. The guy got refunded, thankfully. That's great. Um, but he got stuck in the bathroom in an Indian flight for an hour forty five. Yeah, Spice say, jet. It's a tough sell, right there. I mean, I thought middle seat was bad. This is as bad as it gets. I've had um, Indian food. Uh, some things yeah, have you're gone down. Everyone in that else's bathroom. spices on that yeah. jet. It's a tough. Yeah, it's a tough sell. Saying. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah you know. Like is this is this grounds for compensation legally? You I know? I it's thought false so. imprisonment. All they did was give him. You know, you know, India is a lot different than America. You know, America we sue everybody. India is a little different. They gave him right. his flight money back, and the two went on their separate ways, never to be seen again. That's kind of what happened. But yeah. did it say? I'm wondering about like the landing. Like, did he have to? How did he like strap <laughs> he had to sit in the whole did time? He? Well, he had to sit. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing he <laughs> held on to the handicap bars. And yeah. uh, I just, for me, the worst part about it is, you know, being stuck. I mean, flights are tough for anybody. I mean, anybody who doesn't fly, people who don't fly, they're like, I love to travel. But when you really start to travel, it becomes tough. It's, so I can't yes. imagine being in the back of the plane. Hopefully he went to the first class like plane because that's you know it's a good bathroom. But you think Spice Jet very, had a first class? Come could on. be. You could be. You never know. Spice Jet. Uh, he got stuck in that bathroom, but I just I can't imagine being thirsty. Like what? Like what are you doing there? You're just on your phone. You're just there's a sink yeah. there. Other people have to go to the bathroom. I guess it's the best case scenario. Imagine having to go to the bathroom and then you can't go. There's other people. But anyway, that just happened a couple of days ago in uh, Spice Jet Air. There's a lot Speak- of crazy plane stories out there right now. Es- essentially, he's in a porta potty in the yeah. air. Basically, yes. And you know how like, porta potties are. That's really a- it's a hole. Yes, it's just a hole. Yeah. Did you hear? He's, been, speaking- he's in a porta potty for an hour and and forty minutes Mm-mm. in the air. Mm-mm. Speaking of uh, compensation, did you hear that Alaska Airlines? You know the 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 mm-hmm. door blew off. Right. They offered yeah. the people who almost died fifteen hundred dollars for their trip. Wow. Stimulus check. Oh. Wow. Yeah. He's not taking it. Fifteen hundred dollars. I would I would hit up a lawyer. I would hit my lawyer and be like, Can I sue them? And if he's like, Exactly. No, you just These can't. reactions like, are surprising to me. Jesse and Emily are like, cool. Oh no. I mean they definitely should have gotten way gotten more than that. More than that. that. I would have like, to can, know. I, can oh. I sue them for offering me fifteen hundred dollars? <laughs> yeah. Like that <laughs> would be the question to my no. lawyer. So can I sue them for that? Like, is there a way Look. to add that to the original lawsuit? How did they come up with that number? Yes, that's another question. I saw flight. But, How do they come up with these numbers? Here's here's my thing, though, guys. When you get on a plane, you know the risk. You know, we, we have to go through a whole presentation. Is that the risk of what really? what happens if a door flies off? Is that really the risk? We're all of sitting the there, door flying off. We're, we're all sitting the there. The they have a photo. They have a photo. His body flew out the window. And you heard about the iPhone no, that you, fell are you out. And, yeah, some kid's shirt, like a little kid who was doing this, and his little shirt got sucked up over his body. But guys, when you well, fly, when you fly, and you, and and there's a little uh, pamphlet in front of 2000. you that has inflatable slides coming down that is pictures of people sliding out into the ocean. W- why do you think they're there? Because there's a non-zero chance that the doors are flying off here, and you're going to be lucky if you get compensated. You know the risk. That little kid's going to have nightmares and trauma for the rest of his life. Forever. So fifteen hundred. Uh, he's going to have cover to fifteen hundred doesn't cover therapy. And, he's gonna, for the and next guess what? Now years. he's going to have a PS five. He's going to be okay. <laughs> all right, he'll be all right. He's going to get the new. Bet, how much would I bet if the airliners were like, "Hey, kid, we're really sorry, but we are going to buy you a PS 5 He would have taken that and not the fifteen hundred with his family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll take it. Most eight year old sure, kids, you're like, look, here's the deal. Here's a, here's the deal, Bucko. You can be subjected to lifelong air line trauma in right. exchange for a brand new PS5 and like four games. Yes. Every kid is being like, all right, what, what's going to happen? The door is going to fly off and your shirt's going to go. And uh, <laughs> what else? We, are, is everyone like, okay? Also, Everyone's we're fine. Give you 10, Everyone's fine. Miles. <laughs> yeah. That's usually what airliners do. We'll also give you 10,000 miles. I'm like, really? 10,000 miles doesn't really Bro. cover it. I don't. I don't want to fly this airline again. Why would you give me miles? I don't want your. I want money. Yeah, that's I want what my I own need, jet. Money. Now. 
<laughs> All right. What do you have, Derek? So a little change of direction. My old boy Jelly Roll just testified in front of Congress uh, for the FIND Act, which is a bill that's being introduced about fentanyl. So for those of you that don't know, fentanyl is a, is a street drug that well, actually isn't a street drug, but it's being manufactured in the streets and it's killing tons of people. Uh, a lot of people are mixing it with um, a lot other of drugs. Uh, drug dealers are mixing it with other drugs to kind of extend the amount. Uh, of the drug so that you're putting it in heroin they're putting it in in cocaine and it's literally lethal like small doses of it can kill you and it's it's one of the biggest crises that we've had in america in a long time and jelly roll was actually a drug dealer uh prior to being an artist uh I re- he spent time in jail and I, I actually remember jelly roll back during those days and it's just super dope to watch him stand up. He actually said I was part of the problem. He said I was mixing mm-hmm. chemicals. I had no clue what I was doing. Yeah, I just thought I was. Yeah. He's like, man, I, and, and at the same time, he's like, I didn't really understand the effects it was having on his community. And he got even more personal because he has a, his baby mother, he will, he has a teenage daughter with is actually still on drugs right now. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, I, I live in fear that one day I'm going to have to have that conversation with her about, you know, her mom. So he's, he actually connected with the fraternal, the leader of the fraternal order of the police and talked to Congress to try to get this mm-hmm. bill passed to kind of add more, uh, to, to, to really dive in on this, uh, fentanyl crisis. So kudos to him. Yeah, I love to bad. see rappers and artists do good things and responsible things with their voice. Mm-hmm. This is amazing. Yeah. Uh, there's a clip online, you know, Mac Miller died from fentanyl too. Like, uh, you know, it was laced, the whole thing. And there's a clip online where, uh, f- this other rapper, he's in the studio, this other rapper named French Montana, and he's got a bottle. Mac has a bottle of the real fentanyl. There's different types of fentanyl, but he has like the real like syrup, hundred percent. And even French Montana, who's like always slurring, always a little drunk, you know, he got shot in the head, but even him, he's like, don't do that. That's like, it's going to hurt you. And then, you know, little by little, you know, people think it's a joke and it's it's a joke until, you know, somebody who passed away from fentanyl. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a crisis. Sad. Opioid crisis? No, fentanyl crisis. All right. There's a lot happening this year, and we don't want you to miss a thing. Make sure to sign up for our newsletter right there on the front page at relevantmagazine.com, and we'll send you our top five trending stories sent to your inbox every weekday. We'll also send you a weekly uh, podcast newsletter with the latest episodes, some uh, fan extras, and first peeks at the new shows that we're going to be rolling out throughout this year. Make sure to sign up. It's the best way to keep in touch with everything we got going on. Well, our guest today is Dr. Darius Daniels. He's a pastor. He's also a certified emotional intelligence instructor. He helps people live uh, out their lives to their fullest potential. Uh, We talked to him about purpose. We talked to him about negative thoughts and community. You don't want to miss this. Here's our conversation with Dr. Darius Daniels. Well, we're here to talk about calling and focusing on our purpose. But one thing I want to talk about is that sometimes we never start on our purpose because we're too busy looking at someone else's. Um, You know, we fall into a comparison trap. So I'd love to know, how can we avoid falling into that trap? Yeah, you know, this is one of the things I'm like, I'm like a a, a very, very, I'm, I'm just super interested in change and what what are catalysts like for real change and how long does it really take to change? And, you know, um, and I'm, I'm thinking about that, like as it relates to your question. And for me, you know, I could take a route and answer the question and talk about internal changes and, um, emotional intelligence and (laughs) all of those kinds of things. But man, I've learned 
sometimes that takes sometimes to fix something at the root takes a little time so how can we cut off the fruit while we work on the root? a reframe is important here so let's reframe it and help people see hey god won't help you be anyone other than yourself so we might not immediately be able to deal with the insecurities and the, ten the tendency to compare and some of the questions that you have. It may take us a little longer to actually arrest and address some of that. But in the meantime, let's reframe this. The best possible route for me making the greatest impact is me being my authentic self <laughs> like it's not going to work out any other way you know like we could go theological say hey find yourself and find your root your identity in christ and all that's important but i really think get in my experience getting people there mentally takes a little bit more time and there's some things we can do in the meantime while we're working on that yeah you mentioned that this is something you had to work through yourself but it took some strength to do that where did you find that courage and I'm going to be honest, of course, like, of course, courage in Christ. So I'm not diminishing that. That's important. But I also found it in community. I found it in my relationships. And this is what I mean. I was amazed at how when I got, when I became aware of what was happening in me and when I articulated that to people that I love and trusted, that there were some of them, not all, and that's a different conversation, <laughs> but there were some of them who saw that, who recognized that, who affirmed that, and were really great at encouraging that. And so I think my courage was conjured up from the community, the people I was in relationship with and being vulnerable and transparent with. And that just kind of gave me what I need. I'm not saying it diminished the fear. I'm not saying it even decreased the fear, but it, but it, it encouraged me to, to take some steps in spite of fear. I love what you said earlier about having good people in your life. Um, how do we identify those good people we need to keep in our close circle? You know, I am not sure because mine was kind of experimentation. Like it really was because I think that there, and of course, I'm sure there are like signs, right? But for me, uh, the people I shared when I had this epiphany, the people I shared it with were people that, and I'm not saying they were unsafe, but they were people that had had a track record of being loving, kind, supportive, genuinely interested in my welfare and my well-being. I just think, and I don't think they love me. They didn't love me. I just think they didn't understand me and they couldn't wrap their head around this version of me that was different from the version that they had such great affection for. And um, so I was a little surprised. And so I do think that that, that, is, that there's kind of a, some experimentation. Like there might be people that you think are going to be healthy and helpful and add value and contribute to, you know, some sort of transformation that you're going to undergo in that experience. And those people might not always respond that way or add that value. For me, my advice or what I learned is it would be to recognize that quickly and align your expectations accordingly. Yeah. Like once you kind of see they don't get it, it becomes emotionally, I think it becomes um, a bit emotionally dangerous for you to keep expecting someone to get it who has demonstrated that they can't or they won't get it. But like one of the things I felt was like this, this sense of call, there was a part of what I was uh, repressing was like my entrepreneurial leanings. And it is a uh, part of that. I just think it's gifting and calling uh, nature and then the part of it is nurture it's just it is literally all in my family you know my father does like seven things you know my, my mom like you know what I mean like it's just uh, my uncles my grandfather it's just was kind of in me and it was like man you can't do that and be a pastor it's like those two things are are conflicting it's like you you, you can't do that it's this or that not this and that and that was just a part of my identity that I just repressed, even though I had a theological conviction. 
that entrepreneurship can be a delivery system for value. Like we're able to do this podcast because people created companies and created products and created services. And it is a way not just to create income to provide for your family. It's a way to love your neighbor well. I felt that and I knew that theologically. But when I began to share some of that with people who are like, like some other pastors who were mentors and coaches to me, they just weren't. Some weren't as fond of the of the idea. <laughs> Yeah. So that's what I mean. You know, you mentioned that sometimes people will basically offer criticism instead of offering encouragement. Right. Uh, How do you balance listening to someone's concerns while still moving forward in your calling? For me, some of the voices that had different opinions were, like I said, proven voices in my life. Meaning they They demonstrated a genuine interest and love for me. So I listened and I considered But then I had to be emotionally honest with myself and say, now, after taking an and because I felt like they love me greatly, their words weighed heavily on me. I seriously took them into consideration. There are some people's words I didn't that didn't weigh as heavily because it was it was I didn't think they know enough, knew enough about me to have an educated perspective or they haven't hadn't demonstrated that they had a genuine interest and love for me. But for those that did, I weighed, I considered, and then I just had to be intellectually and emotionally honest with myself and say, okay, have I done what I think to be the wise and the biblical thing? And that is to get counsel, but it is counsel. It's what it is. I am accountable for the decision that I make. And I had to be intellectually and emotionally honest and say, Now that you've gotten counsel and you've got various perspectives, let them contribute to the decision that you make, but don't let them determine the decision that you make. Because ultimately you are the one, Darius, in your family that has to deal with the consequences or lack thereof of this decision. So that would kind of be my my encouragement, my advice to people. Kind of don't weigh all voices equally. But even when it comes to those voices that weigh the most, let them contribute, but not determine the decision that you make. Well, you know, I'd just love to hear, how has your life changed since you started walking in your calling? Well, I mentioned earlier the fulfillment. So I'm like, I'm having a time of my life. And uh, I am, I was just straight up, listen, it is, it's amazing. It is, it is unbelievably amazing. But here's the, here's the flip side. I feel like I'm helping people. Oh my God, I feel like I'm helping more people than I've ever helped. And I'm helping them in ways that I feel like make a tangible difference. And so like one of the things that we did is entrepreneurially, we started this coaching company. And so like, I literally, this is one of the things I saw, like even serving as a spiritual leader It's like, we were teaching people how to pray who are having trouble managing their time. It's like, you know, you need to have a quiet time. And they're like, bro, like my, I can't sleep. My kids are jumping on the bed in the, you know, five o'clock in the morning. One's hungry. One's got to go to the bathroom. I got a dog. I got a job. I got a spouse. You know, it's like, it's like, yo, this is, and I realize it's like, you know, there's a whole, it's almost like sometimes when we, uh, instead of helping people integrate spirituality into their world, we treat spirituality like it is their world. And it's like, these people got kids and jobs and responsibilities. My job is spiritually to read the Bible all day, not theirs. Like they, they're going to, they got stuff to do. And so I begin to see like the need for kind of personal development. And so we just started an arm of a company that kind of helped people in those uh, areas. And then there was another one of the company that, that we started that kind of, um, not just helps people with their lives, but help people who want to help other people with their lives in that way. So we started coaching and speaking company where we train and certify coaches and we teach people to build businesses around it. So people are now helping other people, but they're creating now additional streams of income that allow them to actually make a tangible difference in the lives of people that they love. So there's this, there's this, there's this, uh, 
it's called the black tax and it's a statistic that exists like within the African American community it is like 75% of people who households that make a specific amount the amount uh, skips my head are either sporadically or consistently having to support someone else in their family and part of that's just the result of economic inequity over decades and things of that particular nature. And so it's like, yo, know, I, I would see it all the time. I saw it like in, I played college basketball and I would see guys who say from my community say, yo, I want to make it to the NBA so I can take care of my family. And then other people who come from other communities would be like, yo, what do you mean? Take care of your family. You should take care of your family. Your family should take care of themselves. But it was just two different realities and they meant well and they weren't wrong. They were just speaking from their reality. So just seeing people be able to not only make a difference in in other people's lives but to use what they know to add value to other people and provide a stream of income that can help now their grandmother not just be dependent on medicare or that can help their child who would not be able to go to college now afford to be able to go to college without being you know drowning in student loan debt seeing that happen is giving me a different kind of fulfillment i'm telling you it's just like it's been it's been really rewarding That was Dr. Darius Daniels. You can check out more of that conversation over at relevantmagazine.com. Okay, stay tuned. You don't want to miss this game that's next. listening to Leone Gray. The song is OMG. Today's show is brought to you in part by The Chosen. Season four of The Chosen is coming to theaters nationwide on February 1st, and this season has everything. Clashing kingdoms, rival rulers, and when they're threatened by the reality of Jesus's growing influence, religious leaders do the unthinkable, choose to ally themselves with the Romans. As the seeds of betrayal are planted in opposition to Jesus's message turns violent, He's left with no alternative but to demand his followers rise up. So get ready, relevant podcast listeners. February 1st is the big release day. Go get your tickets now at thechosenriseup.com. Okay, I told you at the beginning of the show, Derek went here for it. So here's the game we're playing today. I saw this on TikTok. Emily, did you okay. were you able to find the TikTok user? Yes. Uh, it was from a church called... Sun Valley Christian Church. Okay, there you go. Sun Valley Christian Church. I was on TikTok. I saw somebody, I saw them post this. They were going around and and they were doing, is this a verse from Lamentations or is this a Taylor Swift lyric? And I thought, this is a great game. We're going to steal yeah. it, give them credit and steal it. Emily went and re- she wrote this. So she's going to read the lyrics to y'all. I'm just going to keep score. So uh, here we go. I didn't write this. Taylor Swift or the oh, that's true. That's true. Taylor Swift and the writer of limitations wrote it. Yeah, yeah. You compiled it. Here we go. Yes, Jesse, you're first. All right. Is this a Taylor Swift lyric or a verse from Limitations? Take away. I can't let this go. I fight with you in my sleep. The wound won't close. I keep on waiting for a sign. Um. Well, it's definitely lament. Um. I will take. I'm going to go with the Book of Lamentations. When did we start doing the eh? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do, I'll I'll do it in post production. You don't have to you do it live. Doing it <laughs> we need a button, yeah, yeah. with her eh. Uh, Marty, you're up. She cries herself to sleep each night, tears soaking her pillow. No one's left among her lovers to sit and hold her hand. I think that's Lamentations. It is. Oh, wow. That's a great lyric, too. Wow. Yeah. Are you All right, reading the Derek. message version? Like- I'd, li- I'd like to give these to like Jack Antonoff and just see what he can do with them. You know? <laughs> uh, this is the message version. Yeah, it has so- to be. I'm like, it's too okay. good. Yeah. All right, Derek, All right, Derek. Ready? Everything you lose is a step you take. Tay Tay. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha, man. Wow. All right. First round. Uh, Jesse's the only one not on the board yet. All right. Jesse's up. All right. 
I just sit here and wait, grieving for the living. Oh, that's limitations, for sure. No. <laughs> that's a creepy, that's a creepy this line. That's awesome. This game is awesome. putting some respect on Taylor Swift's name, okay? <laughs> Listen, can I be honest? For someone who's a self made billionaire by the age of 40, she's got a lot of complaining she's doing in 33, these songs. 33, so. Yeah. Well, even more, knew, even less reason to complain. <laughs> These are re- even less reason to complain. All right, Marty. Uh, never be so kind, you forget to be clever. <laughs> never be so clever, you forget to be kind. That's Taylor Swift. It is. Yes, okay, thank God. Mm. Marty's got two. All right. Derek. But if you went to if you went to like an old evangelical mom's house and had that <laughs> like in a little cross stitch thing mm-hmm. above like the guest room toilet, and it had a Bible verse reference, they would not know. They would no not know. Guess. Yep. It is no a song about guess. her grandma, so she might have been inspired by that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, all right, Derek. This is why I weep and my eyes overflow with tears. What? <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> There's no context for the lyric other than that. That could be anything. This is why I weep. And my eyes overflow with tears. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go Tay Tay. Lamentations. Wow. Lamentations. Why? All right. Okay. Uh, round two is over. Marty's in the lead, two to one. Jesse still isn't on the board yet. The, the points are gonna yeah, change, so Jesse can still kiss. I have. It I looks like you're throwing up mid takes. You're like, <laughs> are you blaming I'm this not, on COVID? I'm good. Yeah, this is I'm your good. this is your flu game, man. You got a rally. Here we go. All right, <laughs> Jesse's up. Round three. I gave up on life altogether. I've forgotten what good life is like. Limitations. Yes. <laughs> finally. <laughs> he's like, eventually I'm going to get uh, limitations. Yeah. All right. He's on the board. Also, that's his verse of the day today. Yeah. Oh. It's, mm. it's, 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 it's another one that hangs over my grandmother's uh, guessing <laughs> toilet. Uh, <laughs> Great. Grandma is morbid. <laughs> <laughs> she needs a little pep in her step. Grandma shot the Hobby Lobby, though. That is not Hobby Lobby. That was what they she have. shopped at that. <laughs> nah, she got that one from Paul Washer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marty's up. He's he's batting a thousand right so far. So let's see what Marty's Let's got. see if we can keep up with it. I remember it all. Oh, how well I remember the feeling of hitting the bottom. I mean, Taylor's never hit the bottom, so let's just say it's limitations. Yes. Wow. She never did. She never hit the bottom. So true. Yeah. So true. All right, Derek. The more that you say, the less I know. Wherever you stray, I follow. Lamentations. Taylor Swift. Wow. <laughs> All right. Guys, so after three me. rounds, Marty has three. Jesse and Derek are tied for one. Now the now it goes to two points each. Jesse, you're up. Yeah. We're doing five total rounds, so we only have two rounds left. Here we go. <clears throat> okay. All right, Jesse. In our history, across the Great Divide, there is a glorious sunrise dappled with the flickers of light. That sounds like Tay Tay. It is, finally. Good, good. Dapple. All right. He just pulled even with Marty. All right. There Marty's we go. Up. All right, Marty. I made you my temple, my mural, my sky. Uh, man, I'm going to say it's Taylor. It is. Oh, wow. Wow. Marty wow. is five. Okay, Derek. Wow, you guys are finally recognizing the genius that is Taylor Swift. About time. <laughs> mm. <laughs> This just feels wrong. <laughs> this needs to be like a game that Jesse plays with his kids later on, like yeah, yeah. that type thing. Yeah. This is a good game. They would game. like it. Yeah. They would actually well, really like cards. it. And they would, it would end with an argument and about yeah. who's winning. But yes. Good. All right, Derek, you ready? <clears throat> Have you ever seen anything like this? Ever seen pain like my pain? Seen what he did to me? Lamentations? Yes. Wow. Uh, All right. That was well, a good that was and, a tricky and the, one. The, that was and the writer. That was tricky. That was tricky. Yeah. I'm, like, this, me. I'm like, she teed this up too good for it to just yeah. be Taylor Swift. Ironically, right I, mm-hmm. ironically the, the writer in Lamentations is actually referencing Taylor Waltner there. It's shocking <laughs> how <laughs> unbelievable. Um, okay, so last round. These are now worth three points each. So it's still anybody's game. All right, Jesse, you're up. Okay. No amount of freedom gets you clean. Oh, that sounds like Taylor. It is. Um, All right, temporarily, Jesse's in the lead. He's got six. Wow. I don't know five. if I agree with that Derek statement, but anyway. No. <laughs> it's pretty dark. All right, Marty. 
You'll find out what it's like to get drunk and wake up with nothing. To be Lammy. It is. Whoa. Either you really right. know Taylor Swift or you really know Lamentations, and I can't I'm figure out which fan. one it is. <laughs> what, read that, read that verse again, Emily. A, my, wife, my sister is like a massive fan of Taylor Swift, like yeah. from the beginning, Good. day one. My wife Same. loves her songwriting. So we had a dissect anti-hero the other day, and she had a, I had to explain to her what certain things were. And oh, this I have is an not anti-hero fair. tattoo. We'll talk about it later. Oh, wow. Emily, read that verse one more time. You have a what? You'll find out what it's like to get drunk and wake up with nothing. Uh, you, that was the, uh, I actually knew it was Lamentations. That was our sermon on Sunday. So uh, <laughs> I'm glad, glad it. Get my drunk my mom has it over her bar. And she, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in our house, Perfect. yeah, yeah. Okay, De- uh, last one for Derek, My even first. though Marty's won it. All right, here we go. Give Derek, Derek his okay, off. you got this. I'd meet you where the spirit meets the bones in a faith forgotten land. Tay Tay, there you go. One, two, three. She wow, all right, well, Marty she won. Does deep. She does. That's crazy. The reason I Marty. did it because I was like, I know I can do some deep cut ones, <laughs> yeah, ease, man, yeah, Wait. you got some. Yeah. Well, it's not me. It's mm. Taylor. Like I've been telling y'all. He's got. She's got. Right. That's why. Uh, never mind. I'm not gonna, I don't want another thing getting taken out of the show. Yeah. <laughs> he, <laughs> usually, I wait for a post to just like take out Marty's inappropriate stuff. Derek, before you came on, he said something. I was just like in the middle of it. I was just like, y'all don't even reference don't what respond. he just said because it. We'll have it to tell won't you when we're exist. not recording anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a legit question. <laughs> it was a legit question. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine. That's the funny part. You'll like, never guess it. <laughs> yeah. Well, before we wrap things up, I want to thank Dr. Darius Daniels for joining us. Like I said, you can uh, check out more of that conversation at relevantmagazine.com. And for all of his resources and writing and speaking and all the stuff, check out dariusdaniels.com. All right. Thanks for listening. On that note, we'll wrap it up. I'm Cameron Strang. I'm Jesse Carey. I'm Derek Miner. I'm, I'm Emily Brown. I'm Marty. <laughs> Again. There you go. All right. We'll see you guys on Friday. Have a great week, everyone. And feel better, Jesse. Feel better, Thanks, brother. I'm going to go lie down. Thanks for listening to The Relevant Podcast. Check out our features, interviews, and news updates every day at relevantmagazine.com. And make sure to follow Relevant on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest. For more great podcasts, browse the shows on The Relevant Podcast Network, which you can find at our site. And while you're there, don't miss the all-new era of Relevant Magazine. A new issue releases every other month at relevantmagazine.com. This is my poison pizza pod. Relevant Podcast Network.